morning, church. How are you guys doing this morning? Good? It's good to be worshiping with you, and um, I'm still dealing a little bit with the voice stuff, so bear with me this morning, um, and we'll get through the message together. In 2019, there were a group of researchers, and they were wanting to study how we view work, you know, what we think about work, how satisfied we are in our jobs, um, what our perspective of work is, and what they came to discover as they interviewed people all the way from CEOs to employees, um, people of different pay raises and all different kinds of occupation, was this, that 85% of us do not enjoy the work that we do. Probably didn't need a bunch of researchers to tell us that, did we? We're, we're just not people, a lot of times, who are satisfied with what we do. We're stressed in our jobs. We're frustrated, right? Like We don't enjoy the occupations that we have many times. And the dangerous thing about this, what we talked about last week, is that most of us will spend 90,000 hours at our jobs or in doing work. Over the course of our lifetime, 90,000 hours that could be wasted because we're frustrated, because we're stressed, because we don't enjoy what we do. And yet the Bible talks about work in a very different light. If you were here with us last week, you heard us talk about that of in Genesis chapter 1, where God looks at Adam and Eve, the first man and woman, and he says, when it comes to work, I want you to rule and reign. It was this Hebrew word, kabosh. And he said, that's what I want you to do. I want you to, to thrive in the work that I've given you to do, that work is actually a gift from God. And so the Bible gives us a different picture. In Genesis 2.15, it says this, the Lord God took man and he put him in the garden of Eden. This is the garden that God had created to work it. That word is abad, to work it and to take care of it. Now, that Hebrew word, and my kids ask me, Dad, are you going to give us a different Hebrew word every week? Maybe, okay? You're learning something new this morning. So that Hebrew word there, abad, um, it was like a service. It was a ministry to God. In other parts of the scripture, it's the word that's used to worship. And it was this idea that the work that God has given us to do it's actually an offering of worship to him. Now, most of the time when we're serving food, when we're teaching kids in the classroom, when we're driving a truck, when we're working on an automobile, if you're a lawyer, whenever you're practicing law, all of those things, we don't think of worship. That's probably the furthest thing from our mind. And yet God, when he talks about the work that we were created to do, he uses this idea that this is a service. This is honoring of him. It's putting on display who he is it's the act of worshiping God. And so the work, using the gifts God has given you, that is worship. When you go in to work on Monday or whenever you work this week, that what you do is actually an act of worship to God because you're using the gifts and the things that He has placed in your life. So it's an act of worship to God. And so we're spending the next four weeks talking about work which I realize many of you may be like, this does not sound fun, Aaron, because uh, it's the weekend and I'm away from work or I don't want to think about that when I'm here at church. But because we spend so much of our time working, we want to look at what does Scripture say about this? And how do we have a God kind of perspective when it comes to the work that God has called us to do? What does this mean for us? Now, I mentioned this last week and I'll say it again every week. We are not talking about work really hard because that's what good Christians do. We're not talking about, hey, if you work hard and you do a good job, God will make you successful and he'll make you rich. That is not what these messages are about. These messages are understanding how God wants to be connected into every part of our life and how each and every one of us, you have been created with unique gifts, unique talents. There are passions that are living inside of you that others around you don't have and that God is calling us to partner with him in the work that he is calling us to do. And so these conversations were sparked out of a book that our staff read called Garden City. And as we read this, we thought this is something we want everyone in the church to hear and to wrestle through and think through of God. How have you created us to work? How do we see work as a gift? How do we see it not as something that's frustrating or that we don't like or we don't enjoy, but how do we honor you in the work that you have called us to do? And so just like I promised last week, we're giving away one of these books. So my wife, Sarah, has one. And Sarah, we're going to give it to someone in the back because I feel like the front row, they always get this stuff, right? So just someone in the back that you want to give that to. 
Um, And you guys, if you want to read this along with us as we're walking through this series, um, you can do that. You can order it online or just keep coming every week because I'm just going to keep giving them away, okay? So every service will give away one of these because and it's such a great read um, as we wrestle through these ideas of what this looks like. So your work is worship. And I think many of us struggle with that because we kind of wrestle with, God, do I really know what you've called me to do? Do I know what you've called me to be? Do I know the gifts and the talents you've placed in my life? And here's why I think that's such a struggle. It's because we read the scripture and we see stories like this. Like maybe you know the story of Moses, maybe you don't. But Moses started off as a shepherd and one day while he's out with the sheep, he sees this bush that's on fire, but it's not burning up. And so he walks over to the bush and when he gets close to it, God speaks to him from this bush that's on fire, but not burning. And God says, Moses, stop being a shepherd and you're going to go take my people and deliver them out of slavery and you're going to lead them into the promised land. Moses knew what his calling was, right? It's pretty clear in that moment. Or you read about someone like Samson before he was ever born, the angel of the Lord appeared to his parents and they said, before Samson's even born, I want to tell you what Samson's going to do. He is going to be mighty in the nation of Israel. He is going to kill and destroy God's enemies And here are things that Samson is not to touch and not to do. And here are things that Samson will do in delivering God's people. And then the angel of the Lord steps in the middle of this sacrifice and disappears and ascends to heaven. And it's kind of this wow, amazing, crazy moment that I'm guessing Samson grew up hearing time and time again by his parents. And you know what? That's what we want in our lives, isn't it? I remember being in a service like this when I had just graduated high school and there was this special speaker And at the end of service, he called all of the teenagers and young adults up to the front. And so we come up to the front and he's like, man, I feel like God's given me a word for every teenager and every young adult in this house. So he starts with my friend down at this end and he begins to pray for him. And this amazing, powerful prayer, God, this is God's calling. This is God's desire. This is what God's going to do in your life. And then he goes to the next person and the same thing, like God has an anointing on you and God wants me to challenge you to do this. And then he gets to me and he says, God bless this young man. And then he goes on to the next person. And I'm like, wait a minute. And I remember being in that moment and I'm so frustrated with God, like seriously. And I get home that day and my mom, who is so wise, I'm helping her make lunch. And I was just honest. I said, mom, I'm mad at God right now. Like every other person got this special word, this powerful thing, and God's going to use your life, and God's going to do this. And all this I get is, God bless this young man. And my mom just looked at me and she said, Aaron, do you know what God's called you to do? And I said, beyond a shadow of a doubt. You know what God's spoken in your life? Yes, mom, I don't doubt it. I know what God's told me to do. She's like, then why do you need a special word from some man? But you guys, that's what we want, right? I want a billboard moment. I want God to show up when God's saying, I've already told you what to do. And for most of us, our lives will look more like Exodus 36. If you've ever read this, they're building the tabernacle, and this is what it said. God gifted skilled workers to do his work. God gifted skilled work. There's no burning bush. There's no angel showing up. What it was is you're a carpenter. Use that for the glory of God. You're a seamstress. Use that for the glory of God. You're an artistry. You work with metal. Use that for the glory of God. Use it to connect people to God. So many of us were waiting for this billboard moment when God said, I've placed the gifts and the talents right in front of you. Just use what you have for the glory of God. See, work can be worship when we use the gifts that God has placed in our life. And just as I mentioned last week, it's shifting the mindset to everything is spiritual. There is no God part of my life and then the rest of my life. This is a God who we read over and over again Scripture. He wants to be connected to every single part of your life. So when you go into work on Monday morning, He wants to be there. Students, when you're in the classroom and school starts up in a few weeks, He wants to be there with you. He wants to be near you. And even the very work that you do, it is worship. When Jesus was here on this earth, there was no Hebrew word for spiritual. Because there was no God-secular divide. It just didn't exist. There wasn't a context for that. And so you read, if you've ever read the first five books of the Bible, and you're like, 
what in the world is going on here? When God talks about worship in Deuteronomy, it's like this. You worship me, so let me tell you how to eat your food. You worship me, let me tell you how to wash clothes. You've got mildew or mold in your house, let me tell you how to scrub a toilet or how to clean a tub. Let me tell you why, because every part of their life was worship to God. He's like, I'm involved in everything that you do. Church, we have to stop telling God, you've got a couple of hours on a Sunday morning, and then I go do the rest of my life. When God is saying, no, everything that you do is an act of worship to me, and I want to be involved in what it is that you're doing. We have to shift that mindset in our hearts and in our minds to realize, God, you've called us. You've placed gifts in our life, Lord, and everything that we do, God, it is worship to you. And so how do we make that shift in our mind? How do we go from work being something that's like a punishment or that we don't want to do or that doesn't seem that great to, God, when I use those gifts you've given me, this is worship. It's honoring you. It's putting you on display for the world around you. The first mindset that we need to shift or thing that we need to do in our lives is to partner with God in the work that you are called to do. Partner with God in the work that you are called to do. Now, let me just explain this as I'm talking about partnering with God in the work that you are called to do. Once again, we can think, well, is that just, is that telling people about Jesus? Is that praying over someone? No, it's the work that you do. So you may be a stay-at-home parent, and as I mentioned last week, when you're folding laundry, when you're buying groceries, that is the work that God has called you to do. You may be a teacher in the classroom. And so teaching those kids English skills or math skills or history, that is the work that you are called to do. You may serve food at a restaurant. That is the work that you are called to do. And what God says is he says, I want you to see this as a partnership between me and you. That you're bringing your best. You're doing this with everything because we're in this together. We're connected in this of of what it is, the gifts and the talents that I've placed in your life. And so in John 15, 15, this is what Jesus says to his disciples. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my father. I have made this known to you. So you guys, we're partners with God in this. He hasn't hidden it from us. He's not kept it a secret. He said, hey, I want you to know what it is I'm up to in the world. You're a part and I'm a part if we've entered into a relationship with God of helping God restore the brokenness of the world around us. Of putting on display for the world what it would be like if God was working your job if God had your position and your title at work, we're partnering with God and putting Him on display in showing His worthship and showing His goodness and His love and His compassion and His greatness and His creativity to the world around us. This is a partnership and He's let us know what He's up to. It's not a mystery for us. But yet so many of us, we're not acting like partners, we're acting like employees. You guys know those people at your job, right? They're going to get done as little as possible just to get the paycheck at the end of the week, like just as little amount as they can do. That's what they're going to do. And that's not a partner. That's an employee. I remember a couple of years ago, um, my kids and I were, um, it was late at night, I think like a Thursday night, it's like 8 or 9 p.m. We realized there's something we need for the next day. And so we run to this big box store in our town. I won't tell you the name, but you know they wear the blue vests with the yellow writing on them, okay? And we get there, for whatever reason, it's packed on this night. Like, there's a lot of people there, and it's pretty late, and I was kind of surprised. So hoping to just get in and out. So we go to one side of the store. We have everything that we need. We go to one side of the store, and there's probably 10 people in front of us. It's the only checkout lane open on this side of the store, and the other side of the store is already full. So I'm frustrated, but I'm like, okay... Just going to get through this. So I'm standing in the checkout lane. Cashier's checking a few people out. After about two people have been checked out, there's still eight people in the line. This individual just walks off. And so we, like idiots, are just standing there like, what do we do? And I just assumed, I'm guessing with everyone else in the line, 
They ran out of bags. They have to go grab something, but they'll be right back, right? And so one minute passes, two minutes pass. There's other employees walking by. No one says anything. And after, I don't know how long, about 10 minutes of us just standing there, someone walks by and says, what are you guys doing? This side of the store is closed. Go to the other side of the store. And then they walk off. And I was so mad in that moment. I turned to my kids and said, we are boycotting this store. We're not buying stuff from here anymore. I'm not paying someone to treat me like this, okay? And that's an employee, right? Wasn't their job. They didn't care about the company. They were just saying, you need to go over there, and that's it. See, a partner would say, hey, I'm so sorry this wasn't communicated. Can I do something to help? I apologize. You should have never been treated like this. Someone should have told you, if we could help you get over to the other side of the store, we're going to get you checked out fast. See, that's good customer service. That's what a partner does. And what God is saying is, stop acting like employees. In the work that I've given you to do and what I've called you to do, don't just do what you have to to get by. Put my glory on display for the world. Put my goodness on display for the world. Let someone see what it would be like if God was working that job because you're in partnership with me of restoring the world and showing the world my glory and my goodness. This is what God has called us to do. And many of us, we need to switch that mindset. God, you've gifted me. Maybe you're good at spreadsheets. Then I'm going to do them in a way that brings glory to God because I'm in partnership with God in this. Maybe you're a mechanic, then you're going to do that for the glory of God because you're in partnership with God in this. You're not doing this alone. And so it's saying, God, I'm partnering with this. How do you see the work that you've been given? Is it worship or is it something you just have to get through, something that you have to do? The next thing that we need to do is to understand we need to work with everything that God has given us. Work is worship when we take everything that God has given us and we use that for His glory. Tim Keller, this other Christian author, says this, that, that we're working, a good definition of work is when we're rearranging the raw materials of God's creation in such a way that it helps the world in general and people, people in particular thrive and flourish. And so the work that you're doing, you need to work with everything that God has given you and so that it helps others thrive and flourish. Is that how you see the work that you've been called to do? Because it could be the same job, but you could approach it totally different, couldn't you? Of, hey God, I'm called to help others. And maybe you're a manager, but God, I'm not just making sure people get the job done. I want to see them thrive and flourish and grow as an individual in what it is that we're doing. Hey, you're a teacher, and it can either be, i got to make sure they get a good grade on that test and get through my class, or no, I want those students to thrive and flourish. I want to take what God's put in them, the raw materials of God's creation, and I want to make something great with them, and I want to see them thrive and flourish in what it is that God has called them to do. It's about your perspective and work is worship when we take everything that God has given us and we use it to serve others. And once again, this isn't just for pastors. This isn't, well, I'm just going to help someone spiritual, spiritually and I'm going to help them understand how to read the Bible or I'm going to pray for them and that's the work that God has called me to do. No, this is in every part of your life. You're called to help people thrive and flourish. In Genesis chapter 4, verses 20 through 22, we see this. The work that God is talking about man doing at the beginning of creation is this. It says, Ada gave birth to Jabal, and who was the father of those who lived in the tents and worked livestock. And so God says, hey, this is a part of work, right? Of taking care of the animals that God has given us. His brother Jubal was the father of all who played string instruments and the pipes. God says, oh, those musicians, they're causing the world around them to thrive and flourish through what it is that they're doing, the work that they're doing. Zelah also had a son, Tubla Khan, who forged all kinds of tools out of bronze and iron. This was part of the work. He's taking the raw materials of God's creation and he's using it to help those around them thrive and flourish through music, 
through tooled instruments, through work, through all of these things. They're taking what God has given them and they're putting their all into it. And so you have to wrestle with this question. I love in this book, Garden City, John Mark Comer talks about this. And he talks about his brother-in-law, Stephen. And he says, Stephen's a designer in L.A. Stephen designs these kind of high-end, top-level jeans as a designer. And he also designs handbags. It's what he does. But Stephen is also a follower of Christ. And he's had to wrestle through, what does it mean to help people thrive and flourish through the designs that I do? Now, the default way that we think of that as Christians is this right here. Okay, Stephen, right here on the butt pocket, sew in a Jesus fish, right? So everyone walking behind you will see the Jesus fish, and they'll know that you're a Christian, like a Christian designed that. Or take one of those designer bags, and maybe on the bottom, in small script, put a scripture, right? And now people are walking around with the Word of God. That's how you do that as a Christian. But Stephen and John Mark, as they were talking this through, said, wait, maybe the best way to do this is just make the best pair of jeans that I could possibly make. And maybe the way to honor God with the gifts and the talents that he has given me and to help others thrive and flourish isn't by putting a scripture or a cross on those leather bags. Maybe it's just making the best quality bag that I can. I love how one author said it. She said, I dare say that in the carpenter shop in Nazareth, there was not an uneven leg table or a drawer that didn't fit because Jesus did everything for the glory of God. And maybe being a follower of Jesus isn't putting your Bible out where everyone can see it or always beating someone over the head with Scripture. Maybe it's taking the work that you've been given to do and using it for the glory of God. And maybe as we do that, church, there'll be a lot more conversations of, wait, why do you work harder? Why do you care about that when other people just kind of let that go? Why is there something different inside of you? Why do you bring something different to this job that we don't see in others? It's because we're doing it to help others thrive and flourish, and our very work is worship to our Creator. It's worship to God in all that we do. Let me give you one last thought here as we talk about work being worship, and it's this. Work is worship when we do it with all that we have, with everything inside of us, with all that God has created us to do. In Matthew 22, 37, it says this right here. Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, is how one translation says that. Think about that. Love the Lord your God with everything that you have. Instead of showing up to work and mindlessly going through the routine and just what do I have to do to get by? What if we were people that gave everything because this is worship? And so it doesn't matter what I do. I bring the gifts that God has given to me in my mind. And I bring my emotions into work to help me serve others and to help that business thrive and for that business to grow. What if I bring my strength and the physical abilities God has given me to whatever job it is that I do with everything that I have, that it is an act of worship. See, so many times we think, well, I kind of want work to be easy, right? Kind of want it to be that difficult. I want to be able to just get it done, get through it, get by. And there was a guy that was researching this neighbor named Robert A. Bajork in 1994, and he said this, we've studied and what we found out is If a job is too easy, you will get bored and people will quit the job. Just what happens. And he coined this phrase. It's called JMD, just manageable difficulty. He's like, if the job is too hard, it'll be impossible. No one will want to do it. But it has to have enough difficulty so that you and I bring our best to it. So that it challenges us. And it's challenging for us that we continue to thrive or it calls us to grow. It calls us to continue to develop. Otherwise, we get bored and we want to quit the job. It's this principle that the Bible talks about that in our work, we would bring our best. And that's why Paul, writing to the church in Colossians, he says this, whatever you do, do it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. 
since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord Jesus Christ you are serving. And some of us think, my boss is a jerk. No, Jesus isn't, I promise. He's not. Because you're not just serving some man, are you? You're serving God. This is worship, you guys. You may think, well, they're really difficult to work with. No, Jesus isn't. You're just looking at the wrong person. Because he says, you're working for me. This is in honor of me. You're putting on display my goodness and my glory to the world around you. That's what you're doing here. That's what I've called you to do. And so Paul says, shift your mindset. This isn't just working for man. This is about eternity. And this is about what God said that we will receive as we enter into heaven. It's what we brought to him as worship. And that includes the work that we do, what God has called us to do. And so I want to challenge you with this, you guys. If we miss this, we could find ourselves in a difficult spot. We're going to talk about it in a couple of weeks of what it will look like to be in heaven and how the work that we do here on earth, I believe, will play into that. And can I be honest? Some of us are going to get there and we're not going to know what to do because we've segmented God into one hour of our week. And God said, I gave you a lot more time to practice. I gave you a lot more time to create and to do things, but you just didn't see it. I wanted you to partner with me in all that I was doing. And you held me in this small little box over here. And I wanted to be so much more connected into your life. See, Paul says this is about inheritance. This is about eternity. And I know you guys sometimes when you're maybe doing a spreadsheet or crunching numbers or sending an email or calling, it can be easy to lose sight of that. But allow yourself to be reminded this is partnering with God. This is serving others so that they thrive and they flourish, God. That's what I'm called to do. You've placed gifts in my life that no one else may have here at this place or in my home or where you've called me to, God. And so I want to use that for your glory. And church, we don't want to miss this. And can I say this? We are in a time and in a moment where the world desperately needs to see this. Where your coworkers they need to see this kind of perspective. That our life is more than just a paycheck. It's more than just clocking in and clocking out. But that everything that we do, we have a God who wants to be connected with us. Who wants to be near to us. Who wants to partner with us and have us partner with Him in the work that He is doing. So I want to pray for you this morning. I'm going to ask if you would take a moment and maybe bow your head and close your eyes. And maybe you're here this morning and you would realize that, Aaron, I'm not connected with God. And I've never really seen God in that light. Maybe you're watching online and you're just kind of flipping through videos, but you've stopped for a few moments here. This is a God who desperately wants to be near to you. Who loves you so much that He'll go to work with you. And He'll be a part of everything that you do. And He invites you that you would take your gifts and your talents and that you would worship Him. And this is not about, well, God, can I do enough good stuff? And can I work hard enough so that you love me more? You can't earn God's love. And the Bible is very clear that left to ourselves, we mess things up and we sin and we rebel against God. And Jesus, through his grace, came, was here on this earth, died on the cross so that we could be brought back into right relationship with God. And if that's you, you're here in this room this morning, you're, you're watching online, you're not hearing this by accident. God wants a relationship with you. And I'm going to lead us in a prayer. And I'm going to invite everyone to say this out loud. Even if you're by yourself watching this, I want you to say this out loud. Let's pray this together because we don't want anyone praying this alone. Jesus, I come to you. And I need you in my life. 
I'm tired of doing this alone. And I want a relationship with you. Forgive me of my sins. Give me a brand new start. Be the Savior of my life. Be the Lord of my life. I pray this in your name. Amen. Now church, can we just put our hands together and celebrate for anyone that may have prayed that prayer? And I want to encourage you in this. It's, if you said that prayer for the first time, or maybe you just feel disconnected from God, and you're like, God, I want to be closer. We don't want you to do that alone. And so we have an amazing team of people here who love people and who want to help you grow spiritually and learn more about what it means to be in a relationship with God. And so there's a simple way to help us connect with you and to encourage you in this. And if you'll take your phone out, you can scan that QR code that you see right there on the screen. Um, and it'll direct you um, to a way for us to get connected. And this week, one of our team members will reach out. And we just want to encourage you and pray with you and make sure that we're helping you. No one should have to walk this Christian journey alone. Your faith in Christ, like it should be done in community. And we want to have others encourage you in this. And so this is a simple way that we can connect with you. We want to do that. And there's one more way I'm going to encourage all of us to respond this morning. In this series, um, we've said, hey, we don't want to just kind of be inspired by these messages or, hey, that seemed like a really good thing and then kind of walk out the door and forget it. And so we're taking about five minutes at the end of each service and we're talking about a few questions that we just discussed in the message. And so I'm going to invite you, if you're in the room, to maybe, you may have to turn around or slide down the aisle or even just with someone that you came here with this morning, but we don't want anyone having to do this alone. There are going to be a few questions we're going to put up on the screen in a moment. We're going to put up about five minutes um, for you to go over those questions. For those of you that are online, this is not your chance to check out. It's not service is done early. Okay, we want you to comment, like just give some insight what you feel like God challenged you with as it relates to these questions. So these are our three questions that we have. Um, kind of that first thing that we talked about, do you enjoy the work you do? Why or why not? How is the work that you are doing um, partnering with God? Is it showing the world who God is and, and what he is worth? And then how does the work you are gifted to do help others? And so kind of that idea of helping others to thrive and flourish. And so we're going to put about five minutes up on the timer. I'm going to stop talking in a moment. And so just look around you, see who's there, maybe the person that you came with, and let's take about five minutes. Let's talk about these together before we leave this morning.